We've got a Notmar. You know what a Notmar is, right? A notice to mariners. That means we're getting close, and you won't believe just how close the dates suggest. Recently published marine notices give us a better idea of how Starship will fly on its inaugural test flight. Today we want to analyse that information and give you an outlook on the implications and what to expect for the first flight. Also, we want to answer your question, will I be able to see Starship on the first flight? Our writer, Alex, recently spotted an update regarding Starship Flight 1. Marine hazard zones were issued for the area east of Brownsville and a region close to Hawaii. These marine hazard zones warn people not to enter a particular area during a rocket launch as it could pose a danger to themselves and harm to their vehicles. Most recently, we saw during Relativity's attempt to launch their Terran 1 that a violation of these zones usually means a hold or a scrub for the launch. The posted zones reiterate our understanding of the trajectory for Flight 1 off Starship. The first zone starts in Brownsville and then goes southeast. This zone will cover both the re-entry and splashdown of the booster, as well as possible zones should something go wrong in this stage of the flight as parts would rain down in the splashdown zone. If Demo 2 taught us anything, it's that people like to get really close to spaceflight hardware when they've been specifically told not to. Following the trajectory eastwards, the flight will thread the needle between Florida, the Bahamas and Cuba. After that, the flight path would fly southeast over the Atlantic and the southern half of Africa. Around Madagascar, it would start to go up the globe again and fly north of Australia and over Indonesia before overflying the Indo-Pacific. Starship is aiming to splash down north of Kauai, Hawaii after re-entering from space. These hazard zones were filed daily between April 6th and April 12th, and if we look at the more restrictive window for super heavy splashdown and Starship's debris, we are looking at a window from 07.55 to 12.10 Central Daylight Time or 12.55 to 17.10 Universal, which would give Starship 4 hours and 15 minutes to launch each day. As of April 5th, this has been refined even more with the FAA Current Operations Plan Advisory showing that the window for the launch would open at 7am Central, that is 1200 UTC, and close at 11am Central, which is 1600 UTC. Just to show you how things are literally changing by the hour, this is future Ryan here recording again right as we're wrapping up the video to tell you we have another NOTAM, which has just been published by the FAA's Mexican counterpart, the Agencia Federal de Aviación Civil. Or as we say in Spanish, Agencia Federal de Aviación Civil. These notices obviously cover Mexican airspace, but they support the pre-existing American NOTAMs as they have the exact same windows. While the window might be refined as we approach launch, there is no doubt SpaceX seems to be attempting a launch during the morning right after sunrise, so barring any morning fog, it should give us amazing views during launch. But wait, there's more. NASA's WB-57 science planes have a public-facing schedule. This schedule is rarely updated, but it gives us another clue about the launch being close. On the website, the aircraft has two imaging placeholders for potential Starship launch or re-entry tracking on April 10th and 11th. What should be said about this is that these are clearly marked as placeholders and might be based on an older timeline, but it is undoubtedly noted. Plane 927 is scheduled for two days, so it might be tasked for re-entry footage, while 926 is only tasked for April 10th, as it stands. This two day for one, one day for another could mean that 927 is flying out to Hawaii whilst 926 is only taking the short flight down to Boca Chica from Houston. This is pure speculation though, based off commercial pilot flight hours regulations. So should you be booking your flights to Brownsville yet? Probably not. We'll discuss that more later in the video, but first let's talk about some orbital parameters. Based on these not Mars and other hints of data, guessing some of the orbital parameters for Starship is actually possible. Dr. McDowell calculates what we're being told would line up before a 26.36 degree inclination. The ship would have a perigee of about 50 kilometers and an apogee outside of the atmosphere, but we're not certain on that detail just yet. This is not considered a stable orbit. The flight would be used to prove the theoretical orbital capability of Starship without bringing it to a stable orbit around Earth. A stable orbit with payloads would then be achieved on later flights. This is nothing new and it's been the plan all along, but with SpaceX's tendency to switch everything up, it's good to see a regulatory confirmation for this flight's path. 
Another question you might ask is, where can I see this? Let's bring some bad news first. If you are European like me, uh, Canadian, uh, live in the north of the United States, uh, or most of Asia, uh, or most of South America, or most of Northern Africa, or the Middle East, or Antarctica, you have no chance of seeing Starship in the orbital test flight. But if you are in South Florida, Cuba, the Bahamas, and depending on visibility, even areas such as Utahcan, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama, you might see the launch itself. After that, it depends on several factors if you'll be able to see Starship in space. The problem, Starship has two sides, a very dark, barely reflective thermal tile side, and a more reflective, shiny steel side. Areas such as Northern Australia or South Africa, where it might be dark during the orbital flight, based on the times published in the hazard zones, might need some luck that the Starship shows the reflective steel side while passing. If the ship is high enough and reflects the sunlight, it might appear as a shiny white dot over your head in the night sky. For the final stage of the flight, based on visibility and lighting conditions, it should be possible to see Starship re-entering from Hawaii. The only problem is that Hawaii is at the final end of the re-entry, which might mean that the ship is already relatively low above the horizon and is no longer glowing while re-entering. The hazard zone for the Hawaii Pacific area is also quite long and it hasn't been detailed with areas of this zone which are most likely to be the actual point of splashdown, but the chances are certainly not zero. In the past, there has been some ambiguity about the booster possibly being landed on the first flight. From this notice, it looks like it will perform a nominal splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico and the attempt to catch a super heavy on the chopsticks will happen later in the program. SpaceX might have some options to change this based on the confidence they feel with the procedure, but a landing for the first launch was always ambitious and will remain unlikely. So should you book your plane tickets yet? I mean, it's kind of up to you, but we'd recommend holding off for a little while as more details are needed for the launch date. Technically, the six-day window has already started and the ship and booster have only just been stacked. Also, the FAA still needs to issue the launch license, which is a legal requirement for the launch. It is, however, getting close, or it could be a dry dress rehearsal to plan and exercise all the necessary blockades and paperwork for an orbital launch. This is not entirely unprecedented for rockets, and it has happened before. We also heard Elon Musk discussing a launch in the third week of April, which would mean April 17th or later. It is very exciting that we are already talking about specific days. Getting into a tenth this month now feels quite likely, which means the launch that's always been two weeks out might only be a few days out, after all. If you were wondering how it would actually look to see the orbital launch, check out OFT by Ryan Hansen Space and the other amazing 3D artists of the spaceflight community. It is awesome, you should totally check it out. And speaking of amazing views, I'd like to thank Flight Club for giving us the amazing data supporting the animations that you've been seeing here. Flight Club is an amazing website that allows you to visualise rocket launch trajectories in 3D and if you're a geek of graphs, you can also see all of the information displayed in a graph format so you can see things like max q acceleration and much more they have tons of launch trajectories and several different tools that you can use if you subscribe to their website so check those out at flightclub.io we'll also make sure to leave a link to the starship orbital test flight launch trajectory down in the description and that wraps up our dive into the orbital trajectory for starship Let's see how the situation develops over the coming days but it feels like starship's orbital flight test is closer than ever Thanks for watching and goodbye.